Hello and welcome to the Valverde Broadcasting Podcast, available on all good podcasting platforms and probably some rubbish ones as well. I'm Richard Jackson, uh, film industry and media guy who does some low-level stuff. And Duncan Casey is an actor and producer who does real things. And we <laughs> say, say hello, Duncan Casey. Hello, Duncan Casey. Yes, yeah, see. Uh, right. They're classic. I think I've ever... Oh, there you go. But every every podcast I've listened to says uh, available on all good podcasting platforms and some bad ones as well. That's also a very hoary kind of uh, this, yeah, this century joke. And if you're liking this video, why not subscribe and smash that like button? Smash the like button. Anyway, we've compiled, uh, we've looked at the releases from 2022 and we've compiled a loose list of 11 of them. Uh, not 10, because screw you uh, that we're going to go through kind of chronologically we just want to talk about some stuff the, the, the state of play the list of releases this year is very long I think the kind of impacted bowel of COVID has finally been loosened with the stool softener <laughs> of, of, of ease restrictions Thanks. meaning that <laughs> quite a lot of films are coming out this year so Duncan's got the list I'm just going to hit Duncan up and we're going to crack on we're going to talk about what's coming out and when um, right. starting with yeah. our pick for, for, for January uh, which yeah. is how they well, we're call not going to dwell on January in Spanish. We're going to spend about, what, three minutes on each one? Um, three minutes on each one, something like that. Get through. Yeah. Yeah. So, num- so in number, number, the number one spot, we have the obnoxiously titled Scream. Scream is back uh, on January the 14th. Uh, the uh, original director, Wes Craven, was unable to direct this project on account of being dead. Um, ah. I have never liked Scream, and I... <laughs> God, that's a big sneeze, pardon me. Because you enjoy, we have to cut that out. Um, I've never liked Scream, ever. And I've affirmed that recently by rewatching it, and I just think it's horribly smug, overrated crap, and I'm sorry. And I think calling the new Scream Scream in this number-phobic convention of, like, well, this is the real one. <laughs> and, you know, what people talking about? about legacy. Well, I, it's fucking... Do you know what? Calling Rambo 4 Rambo made sense because the first Rambo is not called Rambo it's called First yeah. Blood right so or John Rambo depending on your territory I get it but there's this kind of downward spiral whereby that you just call it by the original thing because it's designed to bring in new fans and then having legacy it's a characters I, I, yeah I don't yeah that it, <laughs> oh but so Duncan cool. it's a sequel or is it a remake call because uh, I'm sure the characters are going to look at the camera and go this is like a remake but it isn't one I have texting and snapchat and um <laughs> i'm just annoyed by that entire <laughs> concept of it existing and uh yeah. that goes for all the screen films the screen films that started bad and got worse in my opinion um yeah i mean no, I, 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 I've, I've seen Kramen. the first one and like you found it to be sort of uh, tedious I, I think the thing <clears throat> what i don't quite understand is it's like people go like, oh but it was um you know, uh, it's brilliant because it was like spoof, but it wasn't, and it was like it knew all the tropes, but it turned them on its head, and it's like, no, it didn't. <laughs> so, like, where, it, where, where's Craven made a new nightmare? That did that, yeah, much more. A new nightmare, you know, so much better, so much yeah. better. Way uh, more I, I just think, sort of commentary. yeah, a scream. What scream does is it points at things and reminds you that they exist. Because when you got Matthew Lillard going, oh, Sydney, you got to die on the last day because you're a girl. And it's like, okay, thanks. Thanks for that A-level film studies textbook shit. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> number two. But, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is like what, it's basically what the internet is for, the movie. Anyway, number two, a number, in the number two spot, we have yet another tedious video game property reconstituted as a movie in the form of Uncharted. Uncharted, Naughty Dogs Uncharted, uh, something that I came to late, didn't really get. Uh, I've played the Tomb Raider games, which subsequently appeared to have ripped those off, and I really enjoyed them. I like Naughty Dogs, The Last of Us, I haven't played the second one. Um, directed by Ruben Fleischer, who directed Venom and directed Zombieland. Did you, were you a fan of Zombieland? I thought it was a, a good fun time. I liked that one a lot. Zombieland I did enjoy, and Venom I thought was a dog toilet. So yes, yeah. two for two with you on that. Absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, so this is Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, and it, it's kind of a bit weird to me in that, from what I understand of Nathan Drake, the main character of uh, Uncharted, I think he's a fair. I think he's supposed to be a good chunk older than 
Tom Holland. I think, I believe, uh, Nathan Fillion played him in quite a high-profile fan film, for example. Yeah, really well. Um, and Stephen Lang was in mm. and stuff. And that's that's the most Uncharted I've ever seen. Because, oh, well, actually, right. that and the, the reason why I saw that was because I had to audition for a thing in which I was playing Nathan Drake. For a, it was for a PlayStation advert or something. Oh, really? Oh, um, and I see, think the reason I didn't get Nathan it cause I, was because I, I went in the room and they said, have you done any advert? Have you done any PlayStation advert or any gaming adverts or anything? I said, well, I'm in a game because this was when Erica was yet to come out and I said I'm in a game and they were right. like what, what are you what are you would you do in it and I was like oh I'm a I, I, I said he said oh are you a recognisable are you recognisable in it and I was like yeah <laughs> I'm number two on the call sheet right. so, yeah and so then you I can't I be that made them go you can't possibly be Nathan Drake I'm, I also don't look like him and there was a guy in the waiting room who looked exactly like him <laughs> got it well I you're of his because, you're of his type though aren't you I mean kind his, of build like, like and race and, and hair colour and gave, stuff huh? yeah they gave me a uh, a gun holster and I had to pretend like I'd drop, drop through the roof or something anyway it was fun you know it was cool but that's that's as close as I've got to Uncharted but yeah Nathan Fillion who I'm a big late convert to but a huge fan of um, world's nicest man, it seems, and, and a really yes. good actor. Um, but did that really, really cool little um, fan film, and I, mm. I just sort of look at that and I go, that's really where these things should exist, not as a feature film. And I look at like Tom Holland is that again, the, the irony of having Mark Wahlberg in it when he played Max Payne, and it's like that was a terrible miscast, mm. and mm. I think mm. this is as well. And Tom <clears throat> Holland seems to think arrogant little twerp. <laughs> it's I'm so bitter. Seems to think that he can play anything. Like he's lobbied to play James Bond, and he's like, "Why don't you make him a young spunky twat?" And it's like because <laughs> young spunky not... twat. <laughs> what Five can do that? It's like I, you can't do all of the he's, things. He's Sony's golden boy, and this is a Sony thing. Yeah. It's Tomb Raider with the cock and balls. Move on. What's number three? <laughs> <laughs> number three is the Batman. The 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 definitive article. In, in finally. <laughs> yes. Die, Batman, die. The Batman, the. Uh, directed by Matt Reeves, of course. This has been in the offing for a long, 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 long time. Um, I do look at it and go, good for you. You seem to be having a fun time. But I also go, what's the point in this? I don't know yeah. what this is bringing yeah. that's new. This, sorry, if every I film slow like, motion. This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> if I see slow motion pearls hit the fucking ground one more time, so oh dude, um, I will. Be, oh, I, I don't. Say fit, I, I, that's, I, fine. No, that's fine. Um, it, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, it looks stylistically great, um, and I think if it, if it has something new to say, fantastic. If the thing is simply we deconstructed all these characters and made them into more grittier, realistic, or darker people, it's like well, that's not. Yeah, what if Batman clever, was more but... grittier? It would be 2004. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 look, hey, look, I, Matt Reeves, great director. Rob, Rob Patterson, Rob Patterson, great actor. Loads of great actors in it. The production design looks amazing. I don't know what we're being offered here. What What's different? What's new? And but, yeah, but this one, it's got Penguin in it, and he's fat mad, and it's like. Uh, He's got a rubbish car now. Oh, good. I better watch it then. I'm sorry, but I'm, I don't. Um. <laughs> yeah. I know this constant deconstructing and, and um, what's the word? Uh, uh, what's the word for like de, not de-engineering or de-technifying, but basically, yeah, like kind of. Well, deconstructing, I think. Like, that's the word that was used in comics that then carried over to film. So, you know. Yeah, I suppose. But what I mean is sort of taking all the tech and making it more clunky and oh, everything's getting see. more sort of, yeah okay you know like yeah, he's got, he's got tons of, of things fight. hanging off him like he's got straps so he's got armor he's got like you know what i mean like the, the utility yeah. belt appears to actually how you you know it's like they've had to account for everything that's got to be on it he for some reason has arrows on his gauntlets for uh, you know and it's kind of like <laughs> right i don't know right. i mean my my I, it looks fine my fear is that it's not going to do anything particularly new except look different you know what I mean like I think it's going to have the veneer of dark and gritty but I'm not sure that it, unless they're clever and they might be but it, um, if that's going to say something new fantastic if it's not then I think this was pointless I would much rather have seen them go in more of a comic direction and made that look and work I think it's a time for that probably I don't know and this is because yeah. this was originally I think Matt Reeves came on when it was a Ben Affleck film and you know now it's its own thing and it's fitting into the increasingly confusing sounding DC multiverse um, so in the spirit of uh, not complaining and appropriately on April Fool's Day what's the next film Duncan? <laughs> uh, Downton Abbey 
a new era. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's not that's not April Fool's Day. Downton Abbey, a new era. It's on March 18th. I had no idea mm. there's a Downton Abbey film. I don't know what we're gaining by having a Downton Abbey film. Like, the movie, well, the TV this- show has high production value and stuff. I don't... You know what I mean? This is the second film, though, because there is already a Oh, film, is it? So oh, for the love of that. God. No, it's I a, didn't realise that. Hence, hence the colonified <laughs> subtitle of... Uh, a, a, right. a new era. era. I believe okay. this is taking them into World War Two or One or whatever the... Yeah, two, I guess. Sure, why not? All right, well, fine. But yeah, so. it's, it's... Yeah, because well, I've... <clears throat> I've got through most of the series, actually with my wife and thought it's it's very good like it's very good if you're into that sort of thing it's it's obviously a period drama series it's it's upstairs downstairs or whatever you know it's it's yeah but it's but it uh, you know it's very good it's uh, as those things go and i'm not usually one for that kind of stuff i i thought it was very good um why we need cinematic releases (laughs) a single like i don't yeah well unless one of them turns out to be a t1000 or is it a virtual reality experience is it oh yeah i know that's why isn't it it's because it made money isn't it there you go tea tea chest must be destroyed (laughs) what (laughs) what's that (laughs) that the harry and jen thing (laughs) oh yeah 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 yeah. with martin martin clunes as the the terminator um Anyway, George and Crumpet Munchers. So, uh, <laughs> April the 1st... Right. Oh, I could really go for a crumpet, actually. Oh, the hypocrisy really? of me. On April the 1st, in number four, Duncan, we have... Number five, we have... Number five. <laughs> number Morbius, five, the living vampire. Morbius. So this is the continued and confusing Sony Spider-Man villain world building. And another thing that's been, I think... I imagine, no spoilers for No Way Home, but I imagine this was supposed to come out before No Way Home. Um, I don't know how it fits into the arching kind of Sony continuity um, of, 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 you know, these villain films, because I presumably... I think the trailer... Confusingly, the trailer has a reference to Venom, but then also Michael Keaton's in it as Eugene Toombs. Not Eugene Toombs. Um, you know, the vulture, Toombs. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it seems to have a foot in both things, which is a bit confusing. Uh, so I guess it te- technically takes place, place in the MCU. Um, just Jared Leto, man. He really yeah. he really uh, rubs my rhubarb, so to speak. He um, went and died and drank real blood to get into character. <laughs> and he sent well, his cast members... <laughs> he sent his cast members dick pics or whatever. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he, he slept upside down and lived as a bat for 50 years. And he posted himself to the Nicaragua. Yeah, to it preparation. always seems to culminate in, in an interpretation that this character is a tedious tossbag. That seems to be <laughs> like, the ultimate. Like. <laughs> so, yeah. This character is a tedious. Oh, yeah, another daring role is a tedious emo tossbag. Um, I don't know. Hey, look, am I, apparently Venom 2 is insane, the one that Andy Serkis directed. Like, the first yeah. one's nah, but the second one's just nuts. So, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this, to be honest, but that's kind of the ongoing Spider Verse. I think Matt Smith is in it as well. Um, mm. Off the back of his amazing role as the best guy in it ever. Um, okay, can we move on? <laughs> Please. Uh, at number six, it's Doctor Strange. Is it into the multiverse of madness? Is it? I think. I think it's in the multiverse of madness. In the multiverse, so in the multiverse of madness. Yeah. Not like I am. Sorry. Is that so? <laughs> I, I have not, as of today. Unfortunately, I am hoping to see it tomorrow, but. Um, as of today, I have not seen No Way Home, so no spoilers, please. But I'm assuming it is a continuation of that. Yes, yeah, so no spoilers for No Way Home. Uh, I have seen the trailer for Multiverse of Madness. Um, pretty much everything you need to know to set up this is in the trailer for Spider-Man. Okay. You know, crazy multiverse stuff happens. They do a bad spell and Strange has made a mess. That's all in the Spider-Man trailer. And also, uh, if you see the trailer, it's following on from WandaVision from Disney+. Oh, Plus. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so Wanda Wanda's in it, so it follows on for events of Wanda Vision as well. Um, this what troubles me about it, more complaining. What troubles me about this? Uh, this is a Sam Raimi movie, you know, and Sam Raimi of course wow. famously directed the Spider Man films, but uh, and it's a Sam Raimi film. And the trailer came out, and it's like this does not in any way look like a, there's none of Sam Raimi in it. You know, when the Spidey trailers dropped, you know, 20 years ago, when we were young men, it was like, wow, it's a Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. This looks like Anne Marvel film. There's none of Sam Raimi's energy. And it's a similar thing, because Bill Pope, Sam Raimi's usual DOP, uh, was DOP on Shang-Chi, which is on Disney+, and it didn't really look like it. 
you know, <laughs> like it, it, it looked like a, a Bill Pope, uh, a Bill Pope thing. So hey, look, I'm invested in the in the, in the MCU stuff. Great. Uh, I feel like after Endgame, everything seems like a bit of a wet fart. I really love Spider Man: No Way Home. Um, without saying anything before you have not seen it, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to watch it. Uh, I like, I really like Cumberbatch is Strange. I think all oh, that's really good. I want to see the continuing story, but also it's a Sam Raimi film, and it's like, oh, why did you, why did you bring him if you just you just want his name on it? You don't want mm. him in it, you know. You don't want Sam Raimi's kind of flavour. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Have you got any thoughts on this one particularly? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. So, um, coming up, should we move on? <laughs> please, please, please. Right. Um, these two, I think, are going to be fairly short. Get the short shrift from me. Number seven is Top Gun Maverick. What say you? Ask, ask me if I have any thoughts on it. Do you have any thoughts on Top Gun no. Maverick? <laughs> Um, I don't I, get the fascination with Top Gun. I'm going to put it out there right now. No, I don't. Um, you get a load of you get a load of men, fat men in Y fronts going, <laughs> and I go, that's yes, that's the thing. But um, it's a film I've only ever seen in dribs and drabs on TV. It never, it never really, I never gave a shit. It's I know it's a Tony Scott film, and there's something to be said for that, and, I, and I'm sure it's great. Mm. But I, I just just does nothing for me. Cool. So I've, is- I've said before it's something that's often discussed in queer theory in film studies academia because right, it's yes, highly sure. homoerotic um, yeah. I think what I find quite interesting about well this this kind of plays into the sort of belated sequel thing because having watched the trailer it requires that Maverick's a 60 year old test pilot who hasn't changed jobs in 35 years <laughs> and, and, and and it's like kind of you know Maverick, you're still a Maverick all these years later. Why are you still doing that? Why aren't you in a good job? And it's like, yeah, that's a pretty good question. It's because people want to see him doing what he did 35 years ago. So he has to come out yeah. and do... And you so know I, I, Tom Cruise learned to fly the bloody plane for real. And Oh, yeah, he, he ate away. a jet engine. He ate a jet engine for 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> yeah, on, exactly. in a volcano. He did it for yeah. real, but he broke his little finger uh, <laughs> d- expelling titanium from his rectum or whatever. <laughs> And that and that makes a good film, you know, like the Mummy. Um, so, <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Okay, I okay. feel like people are going to be quite annoyed by this podcast. I don't. <laughs> well, especially with the fact that we chose to talk about these. Films. Anyway, <laughs> um, shall we move on? Yes, let's move on. Let's move on. At number number eight. Number eight. Oh, number um, eight. We, <laughs> we have a we have we have a plum floating in perfume in a gentleman's hat. No, we have <laughs> Jurassic World Dominion. Right now, this is kind of a well. I, I I'm I'm gonna. Right, so I liked uh, Jurassic World, the new Jurassic World. But it was just called Jurassic oh. World, wasn't it? I couldn't remember. Yeah, I quite liked the first Jurassic World. I thought it was a good fun time. I don't have the insane investment that people have in Jurassic Park. It's one of those things, like, it's got a bit of a kind of Star Wars type thing where, you know, if you say the, if you say the, mildly, the most mildly disparaging thing about it, you may as well have murdered their family. Mm. I thought Jurassic World was all right. I had a good time with it. I've watched it twice. Not bothered to watch it again. Fallen Kingdom was fucking dog shit. Like, really, really bad. Like, a really bad film um, for a number of reasons. This one, so Colin Trevorrow didn't come back for this, for the second one. He's back for this one. They released the, uh, did you see the, the Jurassic World short that they released to YouTube that he directed in, in anticipation for this? It's, no. it's kind of good. It's a fun I don't little care. kind of this, horror right. one and done. Oh my, my, I am so remarkably <laughs> bowled over by, your, by, your, by, by, the, well, no, by the fact that you should have enjoyed the first The first one is everything that's wrong with what we've just been talking about, which is that it's exactly, a, it's just a remake of the first one, essentially uh, calling itself the same thing, in which the same things happen every now and again. But it's okay because someone pops up every now and again and goes, the first one was, this is a sequel, we're going to make it cooler, make the dinosaurs more bigger, rah, 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 rah. Uh, give them five assholes or whatever. It's like someone literally says yeah. that. But it had five arseholes, though. It did five poos at once. On Chris, Chris Pratt was running away once he did five poos at him. I mean, that's to me, it's a textbook example of the very thing we've been complaining about. But go on. Uh, I liked it. It was like it was like a kind of Irwin Allen, you know, 1970s disaster movie. I kind of dug it, I, and, and it took place in an active park. Again, I don't love it. 
and I had a fun time with it. I watched it twice, but I, you know, I, I don't love it. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. It's got I Jeff just, in it. Retur- returning legacy characters. Oh, co- of course, um, yeah, because it got to that point. It's just like the. At least pendancy. it wasn't called Jurassic Park. Oh, it wasn't called Jurassic or, Park. Or, uh, <laughs> uh, life. Mm finds a way <laughs> and let's find a way out of this that's a good segue um <laughs> right good I, I i really enjoyed how how angry that made you i'm I bowled just... over i was like oh no what have i done <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, each um, oh my god at, at number nine number nine we need to get through these number nine <laughs> thor love and thunder right okay like so and, and crap thunder and crap thunder i liked uh I think Thor, um, what was Taika Waititi's previous Thor? Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Superb. That's one of the best Marvel films, I think. I think it's one of these things. Marvel started off by letting directors have their own kind of voice and a bit of flavour. That's got lost in the mix, as I just said about Sam Raimi. But Taika Waititi was able to make a Taika Waititi movie in the Thor universe. And uh, I thought it was really great. And if there's more of that, they've had the sense to kind of go in for more of that. Uh, I'm here for it. This is one where I'm, oh, you're MCO fanboy. Uh, there you go. I saved you typing it. Um, I, you know, if this, I, I really like Jojo Rabbit. A lot of people didn't. Uh, Hunt for the Wild of People. You know, Taika Waititi's done so, 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 so many good things. It, it, what we do in the shadows. If this is anything like Ragnarok, I'm here for it. Yeah, same. Um, I agree. I think he can lean a bit too heavily on the uh, sort of post-irony comment of like oh yeah my name's Korg I've got a rock for a dick or whatever and the fucking you know and it's just like oh no my dick fell off and oh hey hey and it's like that's all funny but it's like it needs to like can we move it on from that this will be the interesting thing so I but I am I am I'm in I think yes let's give him another one because he I mean look he made the best Thor film which wasn't hard but he did, yeah, right, yeah, 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 right, it, right. He made it ten but times better I, than it. I think it's one of the best thing. MCU movies as well. I though. agree. Yeah, I do think no, it's the best MCU. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's got some incredible stuff in it, and I think it just skirts the line of not getting too kind of um, kitsch and up its own ass. So good for it him. Manages to um, kind of stand alone as well. I think for the most part, of course, it has Hulk in it and stuff, but it, you know, yeah, it kind yeah, of stands it's alone. Planet for the most Hulk part. vibe. Um, mm, so number mm. ten across the Spider Verse. Now, I fucking adore Into the Spider-Verse. And it sounds like, yeah, this is teeing up a two-part thing. And um, what I like about this, the one thing that gives me pause is that it's part one of two. And I hope, because I think these making the films back-to-back things rarely play out well. Mm. Um, However, you know, it's been three odd years. It's an animated movie, so it wasn't affected by COVID in the same way. It feels like they've been wise enough to step back and take their time over it. I just revisited Spider-Verse at uh, Christmas because it's wonderful. It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant film. I, I would like more, please. Thank you very much. I will take more of this. Lord and Miller, the lovely, beautiful, you know, the Marvel What If series on Disney, the animation was crap. It was just horribly flat generic. That film, the original one of these, was so, so, so creative. Like the different spider people were animated at different frame rates and stuff. Mm. Like it was, it was so brilliantly creative and, and 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 paid service to the kind of multiverse concept without having anything behind it. It's not like the MCU took 11 years worth to do multiverse. DC's had a similar amount of time. They just went, this is a multiverse film and just introduced you the concept of the multiverse straight away in this lovely, kinetic, beautiful way. I want more. Sign me up. I will suck its willy. <laughs> you said Willie really hasn't made it any better. Um, no, I agree. I I, uh, I had a really lovely experience watching it with my then, I think she was four, five month old daughter, and um, uh, sorry, and I was going to judge it. It was so good. It is such a. I mean, not that she knew what was going on, but um, she did. I remember when Spider Gwen. Is it Spider Gwen or? Yes, yeah, Spider Gwen. Yes, she came Spidey out, Gwen. and for some yeah. reason, my daughter let out a little shriek of delight. Um, oh, again, not that I, I don't oh. think she knew what was going on, but she seemed to like. So no, it's it's um, it's really really good, and it, and I think if they they seem to have sort of taken their time with it, and if this is uh, in the same of the same quality, which uh, of every reason to think it will be, then hundred percent in for this because I think this is what we need to be doing more of, and it's what DC need to pick up the baton again because they were doing such great work with animation, and they kind of dropped the ball as they have. Yes. Uh, the film universe, which brings us on to number eleven, the and also another multiverse thing, The Flash. Yes, our third multiverse film 
technically own three different studios in one year. It's something of a band. Um, (laughs) It is, rather. And the big thing with this is, so they're bringing back Michael Keaton, which we all know. Mm. Um, And it seems that Michael Keaton is going to, there's a HBO Max Batgirl film in which Michael Keaton's going to be Batman. Um, coming in two years hence or something. I believe Affleck's in it as well, isn't he? I think. I think he is, Affleck. it would seem, yeah. And I think what they're going to do... Have you read Flashpoint or watched any version of Flashpoint yes. before? Yeah, I did see the, the animated version they did. Yeah. Right, so I feel like what they're going to do is instead of Thomas Wayne, when Flash goes into the Flashpoint, he's going to go hang out with Batman 89 Batman and then he's going to meet... Affleck Batman or because you know like in spoilers for a 10 year old comic in the end of Flashpoint Thomas Wayne writes a letter to Bruce Wayne that Flash hands off to him that's really good um, it's really amazing yeah it's really, really lovely really nicely done um, so you know this all depends how much time you've got for uh, how much time you've got for old what's his name what plays Flash um, Ezra Miller Ezra Miller, thank you. And you're going to have more sports movies. It's directed by Andy Machetti, who did um, Machetti, probably got that wrong, but directed like oh, It. Uh, it's Chapter 1 and 2 and Mama and um, Lock and Key and stuff. So, you know, there's someone who's... This trend at the moment, it's like Scott Derrickson. You bring over these kind of, in, not indie, but kind of small small horror film directors over into these big franchise pictures. Um, I want it to be as good as... No Way Home and Into the Spider Verse. I'd really like if they. I'd really, really like if they pulled off a cool, wacky multiverse film. Um, you know, so I, I'm pulling for it. I really want to like it. I want it to be good. Me too. Uh, I agree much. with you. My fear is is that the ingredients in this particular cake include broken glass and dog poop. That's my own. I, 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 think, I think you know. It's like it's. This is the problem. With the, the perennial problem they've got with the DCEU is that some. Of, some of it worked, vast swathes of it didn't, and it, and I would include Ezra Miller's Flash in the didn't category. And He's now you're going to hang an the entire film on him, and that this is going to be your your ironic. Oh, here's your Michael Keaton. Here's your, you know, look, it's our multiverse, and it's like, yeah, but if he's toilet, and if the whole thing is yeah. sort of hung around that really heart barely developed shitty character, frankly. Um, I I just sort of go like, you're not, and and if it's made in the same sort of box ticking spreadsheet quick I need to get my bonus way that all the like the last few have been made and I you know I take no pleasure in saying that I don't I, you know and I know that means oh, well that's right, the but thing but I but it but it is a thing like, I'm sorry you did do that you did make Justice League I mean I'm not being funny undeniably but, like, <laughs> undeniably yeah so it's kind of like well I yeah this is this is no, I mean, I really want it to be good, and, and I'm, I'm pulling for it. But I just think, you know, if if they think that they've just put the, you know, they've they've got their cake batter ready, and now they're going to chuck a load of broken glass and poo into it and still call it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a good time. I, I just. But, wait, I but we got Mary Berry to make it. Yes, <laughs> broken it. glass and poo. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Well, say, take I, it as painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't oh know what else god. to say. It's ama- that is an amazing <laughs> summation, though. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Look, you know, I want the kind of, and, and I'm someone. Uh, you know, I don't like Batman Eighty Nine. <laughs> I really quite don't like Batman Eighty Nine. No, yeah. um, this was set up in the end of the Arrowverse event as well, because Ezra Miller met Grant Gustin Flash. Yeah, and they showed the Batman Eighty Nine universe in that episode and stuff. So it's nice that they're showing that it's all it's all counts, you know, across all things, which is what Marvel have done. You know, I never thought we'd ever see multiverse. We've seen like one of those things from comics that would, you know they would just wouldn't dare translate to film, and now we've had we've got three in a year this year based on things yeah. that they've been slowly tearing up. So, I, I, well, know. I do think it is all part of this. I call it post-irony. I mean, I'm sure that's not a, the technical term for it, but it is all part of that, you know, the Halloween sequel, whatever. It's all part of that. Mm. It's what The Matrix did, you know, it's that, you know, as long as we wink and nudge at the camera and we go like, we're aware of what we did before, it's like then you kind of, it's like a sort of get out of jail free card and you can still keep making the same old shite. And it's like, I'm... <laughs> I'm sceptical, but I am up for it. I would like to see how it pans out, but three in the same year. Come on. Well, at least they're from separate people. There's that. Yeah, yes. I mean, uh, but I wasn't since you mentioned That's it. That's like the Great yeah. British Bake Off with dog poo and broken glass cakes <laughs> being this week's challenge. It's like, yeah, but... <laughs> I really think you've overcooked your dog poo. It's quite bitter, and I like my dog poo to be a bit soft. 
That's poor Hollywood. Um, and so that was our list. This was a list of things we, we just picked them. I just really need to quickly say, please don't forget, Duncan, because you just mentioned it. Uh, the, fi- the end of the new Halloween of David Gordon Green's new Halloween trilogy is on October the 14th. And uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to throw any potential spoilers or plot points, right? But I think Michael Myers might stab some people and then they catch him and it finishes. Don't want to, you know, don't want to spill the beans too much, but I think that might thought. be what happens. That oh, was the end of the important trilogy of the story that has to be told about how the man in the pyjamas stabs people. Yeah, so, I think he might go and stab some people. I don't know, though. I'm not sure. So this would be Halloween 4, technically? Halloween 4. It's the, tr- it's the true Halloween 4. You know, you know. <laughs> Keeping in mind, okay. going back to the going back to the irritating scream, just calling it scream. The mm. the truth heat sequels Halloween was called Halloween, which therefore makes it the third film in the Halloween franchise called Halloween. If you count Halloween, the remake Halloween, then the sequel Halloween. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there you go. That was uh, our ten upcoming releases of 2022. There are many more movies we could talk about, but we wanted to distill this down into a nice half hour format. So if you would like us to talk about more movies, perhaps ones we do want to watch, uh, we can do that for you sometime. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We've we've had a lot of fun doing this one. Uh, you can find us on all good podcasting platforms and our home on YouTube as Valverde Broadcasting. If you just put Valverde Broadcasting into into Google, if you're unfamiliar with us, you will find our social media and the such like. And, uh, and and interact with us as you may. Dick pics, public shaming, cancellation, whatever. It's up to you. Do what you like. Uh, and that's it. I think, Duncan, we're off. What do you reckon? I reckon so. I'd best go down to oh. <laughs> the puppet show. Right. I thought you were going to say down to Abbey. But never mind. Yeah, um, it wouldn't rhyme, would it? <laughs> that's funny because it's tortured. Anyway, it's gone too long. We love you. We'll see you later. <laughs> bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>